and welcome to the PM show. Here we are live with you at, well, not quite live, recorded live, uh, on the 12th of a very hot and extremely sticky, isn't it? It's, <laughs> it's, that it's way. melting. Yeah. August 2020. So not only is it COVID, it's proper hot and very hot. So we're actually recording this a bit earlier than we normally do as well, purely to try and beat the heat. I've got my little mini fan, I've got a cool drink, and it has been horrendous. And I must admit, it must be pretty bad in the warehouse, is it? To be honest with you, it's actually not too bad at the minute. It's this afternoon it seems to get to, it gets a bit unbearable to be honest. My office is quite cool, but if you're in the shop and stuff, it does get a bit warm. So I can imagine the roller still, door acts like a giant because <laughs> it's yeah, metal, yeah. catches well, the sun been, in the afternoon. I've been having it up, you see, to get some fresh air in, but obviously because we're recording this, I've uh, obviously closed it for the noise and stuff. But um, yeah, it's it's been a bit warm, shall very we say. Warm. Very, very warm. Never mind. <laughs> it keeps everybody happy. At least everyone can't complain about the weather. Oh, no, we've got summer at last, haven't we? Some, yes. some sort of summer. So, uh, Unless yeah, you're in Falkirk hard. and having thunderstorms and torrential flooding. Yes. Welcome to yes. the United Kingdom. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know what it wants to do. Yeah, we'll that's it. We'll, be, we'll have in frost and snow next week. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, We'll just <laughs> have it damp and drizzly. You wait. Yes. Anyway, an exciting week, uh, obviously this week uh, for the PM store, um, lots of stuff coming in, lots of stuff going out, uh, obviously a lot of the pre-orders moving around as well, so yep. I know a lot of the members have been saying that they've had their Spitfires through. Yep. I have to say, I reviewed it yesterday, it's edited, it's up with you right now, you can go off and see the review of that one, and let's face it, I wasn't let down, I was blown away by the box art, and I do say on there, I think really they should literally just do that as a canvas be nice as a it canvas should. that one it'd be really really nice but the kit itself i have to say is beautiful don't forget you do get two in there that's the whole point you don't have to do both versions either with the difference obviously they've got different canopies the very early one's got that funny prop on it uh just with the twin uh with a different canopy and the slightly the one after it the mark one has the traditional more bubble type canopy three prop system onto it you can build any version in between because you just get two full sets of everything in there so if you want to do a few little very early ones or the later one uh, and do it that way the mark one you can beautiful options as well i have to say you know the markings the bits and pieces in there yeah it, it's literally eddard quality right the way through so, nice package isn't it nice package it is very very nice in there so really there's nothing you can sort of complain about uh, and the other one a review that's up for you right now is obviously the uh, tales of iwo jima again it's funny because i've done these back to back you see so it's Eddard again, the quality, the crispness. I think where Eddard has always stood out to me, um, you know, from making literally thousands of models over the year now, is the detail is so fine. That's mm. the thing with Eddard is that when you're building their kits, uh, you you look at the like the the riveting detail and the panel line detail, and it always looks perfectly in scale or what you would imagine it to be in scale and things like that. So from that point of view, again, the the various ones on there is just right. The way that they've done the wings because they're puttied, there is no riveting details. The areas that is metal, there is riveting details. Uh, and I must admit, we did have a member message me the other day and said about which areas you do get the the great chart. That shows you you get it online as well but there's actually a, a chart that shows you uh, which areas were painted and putted versus which areas are metal i said to him the easiest way is because he's got this kit is that if it's got riveting detail it's metal finish if it hasn't it'll be obviously the painted silver effect onto that one but again the markings in there i don't know if you've had a look at those matt they are beautiful uh, yeah. they are absolutely stunning these ones that are down in here they've got some of the choices in there just absolutely work couple of nice bits of resin in there as well so obviously you get the wheels so it's weighted resin wheels as well you get a bit of photo etch as well for the reinforced plates because this is a later mustang uh, for the rockets to go under the wings and you get the resin parts for those as well so that's what you're getting in there not to mention then obviously color photo etch as you get with both for the cockpits uh, and things like that as well so yeah and full mask sets really really nice beautiful kits very very nice week this week doing those you know it's that thing is sport with eddard they get just better and better yeah. and better and when you put box art with it as well you're like yeah both of them are very nice actually very very colorful do enjoy that yeah, i mean they're box arts you know especially for their limited edition ones they're big collector's items on their own never yes. mind the kits aren't they yeah. like i say i think i really think they're missing the trick with not doing the box arts just as a separate standalone hmm. you could buy a print yes if it's a print that you can frame 
Yeah. Uh, no, obviously they tried it with a tin sign with the P40, and then they've tried it with the roll-up posters, didn't they? Yeah. Which was big, and they was having trouble because. Uh, but I reckon if they did them as standalone, people would buy them. They just mm -hmm. make fantastic artwork for your man cave or even your your home. To yes. be honest, they, yeah. they're just brilliant. They're just really well done. And I think, like like we were saying last week, I think with them and an air fixers box art are probably the best on the market by an absolute country mile yes. for me. You know, yeah. if you if you're um, coming back to the hobby, say, and it's that usual thing when you was a kid, mm -hmm. you know, box art just draws you oh, to, to play. Oh, just sells it. it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Eddard, like I said, Eddard and Airfix are just head and shoulders above everybody else at the minute for it. So, mm. yeah, kudos to them. I was just thinking as well, you know, you're on about the mouldings. Um, you, you know, like, I think really the standard for moulding was sort of the Far East, wasn't it? Yes. You know, stuff coming out of the Far East. It, like, say if we're going back to the 80s and 90s, you're probably looking at Tamiya Nazagawa, that sort of thing, aren't you? And then, obviously, the Chinese companies have got involved in their, with their technologies and stuff. But I think now, you know, like, Companies out of Czech Republic, obviously ICM out of Ukraine, mm. and companies like that are really now on par. I was just looking at something which we'll talk about in a minute, which is the Armour Hobbies kits, because you obviously raved on about the Hurricane. Yeah. yeah. Just like Tad. And to be honest, that we've had them in, and I've not, I've seen your review, but I've not really looked at one in the flesh. Mm -hmm. And literally, I've just sat here waiting for you to come on. I've just had a look at the one I've got down here that I'll show you in a minute, and also the Wildcat. Yeah. And like you said, it is like CAD. That is, it is unbelievably crisp. Say it's one seventy second. The actual panel lining is just off the chart. It, it is. is. Yeah, I must admit, over the last few years, and I know we discuss this a lot. We were saying that, as you say, that traditionally Far East, especially obviously Japan, yeah. if you wanted the level of detail, that's where it was. But honestly, recently we've been saying the, the you know, the ones coming out of you know the uh, Eastern Bloc type countries and things like yeah. that now, I think are better. You know, yeah. if you look at the surface detail on the, like Eddard's MiG-21, Spitfires, uh, Mustangs now, I think they're better than Tamiya's because they are just yeah. so delicately done, very, very finely done right the way through. Um, and I suppose the biggest thing as well is that I think what Eddard do, especially these two kits, because I couldn't see one, is do the, you know, I suppose it's the wing that wings trick of actually getting them in and out of a mould with an, an ejector pin mark on the part. Yeah. Which, again, Tamiya, let's face it, I, I know it's my biggest beef with them, but I'm <laughs> just winding them up, really. But yeah. for some reason, that if, you know, why use one ejector pin when you can put 10 on it, you know? So, so, and that's what they seem to do. And they are covered in ejector pins. And okay, Tamiya over the last few years has really got better, and they don't tend to put them anywhere that's blinding you in the face. But occasionally they are, and they need dealing with. But you can put both of these kits together and never have to worry about ejector pin mark because there's none on it. You know, yeah. they, they either are completely flush and very hard to see, or they're just not physically on the part, which I think the first one that started that was, uh, rest in peace, Wing Up Wings. Uh, yes. You know, where obviously <laughs> they used to be able to get massive wing sections out yeah. of a mould without an ejector pin on it, which was incredibly, you know, the engineering to be able to do that is, you know, very, very clever. But, you know, Eddard do it as well now, you know, and that's just what I, you know, traditionally I would call a smaller company. Clearly they're not, they're huge, yeah, but big. compared yeah. to some of the Far East companies yeah. and things like that, they are, you know, they probably don't do the numbers, but they can produce a quality kit like that. So from a modeler's point of view, you know you're into that thing where it's going to go together pretty good. You might have the odd little thing, but it's generally you're not going to have a problem, but you don't have to worry about ejector pin molds. Burring as well is very, very small on these kits. So, you know, mm. I know we speak about it. I'm not sure about these ones, but they do their in-house molding, don't they? Yeah. I think so, they do, yeah. you know, again, it, I suppose it gives them the ability to refine the molds with their CAD work and then from the tooling to produce fantastic kits. And it must be a lot easier. We've often spoken about it before. If it's in-house, you just go yeah. down the corridor, you know, whereas before yeah. you've got that thing of, you know, you've got to speak to the tool maker and the tool maker might be different to the actual molding company. So, yeah. you know, trying to get three to work together must be very, very difficult. But when they're in the same building, it must be so much easier. Uh, yeah. But again, beautiful, beautiful kit. Very, very nicely done. So, um, go on. Sorry, it's just funny going back to that Spitfire. Can you remember when it was sort of announced they was going to release it mm. and you get that no. Oh, oh, another Spitfire, Spitfire. Well, yeah. Spitfire, because it's like you've got the Tamiya one, you've got the Airfix one, and blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And now, obviously, I mean, we've sold bucket loads, to be yeah. honest. We've sold half our pre-order and separate. We have sold loads of them. So it's obviously a Spitfire, and we'll talk about the other thing they're doing as well in a bit, but 
they're not daft from a business point of view. They know a Spitfire is going to sell. Yes. You know, and a Mustang, a P-51 is going to sell because it's a iconic aeroplanes, aren't they? Let's Absolutely, yeah. Um, and to so, be honest, yeah, again, it's, the, you know, obviously we all joke about, oh, it's a Spitfire, it's a Mustang. But then yeah. it, we often spoke about, you know, the d downfall of wingnut wings, not being able to shift the quantities because it's yeah. very much a, a niche market. Um, yeah. So you, if you get, obviously they've come along and you know, I assume these are probably going to be sellouts in no time at all, but that mm. means it's cash in the bank. They can develop then other projects and push through yeah. with that. And also if you are a Mustang fan, obviously this is the late, one of the last ones, I think, isn't it? It's one of the later yeah. ones, it's got exactly. a slightly yeah. different tail on it and things um you know and stuff like that so you've got obviously right the way through from your early ones to your late ones you've got all the versions in between and to be honest like i said in the review the spitfire mark one is a bit like buses we didn't have one mm. and then all of a sudden you've got the airfix one rack up you know yeah. and then tamia do one and uh, they've done one as well yeah. so but again before you know your options were very very limited if you wanted to do that type of thing so yeah. yeah in some ways i think you know okay we all do it oh god another spitfire another 109 another mustang but when yeah. they're done right and it, it's yeah. not just cashing in i think it, it's well worth it uh and again if you are a spitfire fan battle of britain fan things like that then obviously you are pacific theater mustangs obviously i always think the pacific theater always gets overlooked full stop uh yeah. you know it always tends to be you know the european theater of operation for fighters bombers and stuff uh so again it's quite nice to get a little bit of love in the pacific so definitely yeah good, yeah good definitely kits. yeah absolutely but like well say, worth having just, a good look hey. It's just box art in it that sells them. It is. But again, again, going back to Eddard, they're actually clued in as well because obviously they knew it was going to be the Battle of Britain sort of memorial thing this year. So they brought the kit out at the right time. Obviously, it's got the right box art and box top on it, you know, which is going to sort of ignite people's imaginations and whatever to to, to buy them. So, you know, we've had this with other companies. Let, let's just take the Saturn V, yeah? Yeah. A said company who completely missed the boat when they could have really cashed in on on yeah. it, the big dragon one. Um, and I can't see an excuse for it. They know these things are coming up. It's not like it's just going to happen next month. And no. oh my god, we've got this really short deadline. Yeah. We don't know what, these are you know you know these anniversaries and, and stuff are coming up. So if they plan ahead, they can shift units, which is what they're in business for, isn't it? Absolutely. You know, yeah. Get them out at the right time. Yeah. And cash in, and I mean to be fair with Eddard, obviously what's been going off in the world with the pandemic and stuff, they've they've done well to get it out, Absolutely, you know, in yeah. time as well. You know, it's not come out in December; mm -hmm. it's, it is out during the Battle of Britain, yeah, which is what you want, which so, is ideal timing, yeah. yeah, yeah. And also talking about Battle of Britain, there's a segue for you. We don't is. normally get them, but we've just had that come in. Fantastic. Which one is winning its way to fill, yeah. Um, so this is the Mark 1 Armour Bees already came which Phil's reviewed the, I don't know which version you reviewed I can't remember but anyway this is the Battle of Britain one so you do get the Battle of Britain obviously decals in it very nice and again it's honestly for the scale this is just unbelievable like... you know say it's a new company as well mm -hmm. and again I mean Armour Bees are they out of the Czech Republic or Polish Polish Poland yeah. again Another company, you know, country, should I say, where their sort of injection molding technology and everything is just off the chart. Absolutely. You know, yeah. obviously I've reviewed that kit and you can see I'm going to build that kit as well in the next week or two as well. So it, it looks like CAD. It's funny. It, it, it is so crisp and nice. You know, when you see, obviously, we've all seen like recently the Vulcan, uh, the yeah. CAD photos and the various yeah. things from it. And it, it's like, yeah, that looks really, really nice. I hope it's as good as that. The funny thing is you take that out of the box and think it looks just like the CAD. It's so yeah. great. I think, you know, obviously the plastic is very high quality in there as well. Um, yeah. But the, the panel lining, the detailing of it and absolutely everything, it is just so sharp uh, and yeah. crisp. It is on another level. And to be honest, if you haven't twigged it, it's, it's 70 second scale. Yeah. So, you know, and that's, you know, we often talk about benchmarks of 70 second scale, 48 scale, 30 second. I think that's probably the new benchmark for 70 second because that is absolutely gorgeous. But again, like Matt said, it's a brand new company. You know, um, yeah. yeah, they've sort of hit the ground absolutely flying and running, you know. Um, yeah. They're not messing around. They've done some really good research on that. Some very, very nice tooling into there. And again, it's an all-around package. A couple of different versions as well, because obviously you get the limited version, which has got the mask set, a little bit of photo etch. 
Yeah. Or you've this got the, 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 the standard. One. Yeah. So is, I think yeah, they may yeah, be yeah. following along from a certain other company with weekend editions yeah. like you get the weekend editions like these, uh, yeah. which is literally no frills uh, into it, or you get the other ones then, which are the normal sort of profi pack with a colour photo etch, few bits and pieces, or you get the full ones like this as well. So again, yeah. it gives the modeler the option if he's going to be just really external and not worried about the detail on the inside, or it's got both options. So. But just going back to this one, this is a limited edition, so I'll take it this is obviously to coincide with the Battle of Britain. Absolutely, so once, yeah. Once this one's gone, it'll be gone again. I yeah. think you won't get this one back. So, if, you know, if you're a bit of a collector, mm -hmm. shall we say, or you're into that, um, it's probably worth grabbing one. Definitely. Because they're all pretty cheap, really, as well, for what they, what you get. I yeah. Think about 15 quid or something, I think, retail over here. Yeah. It's not a lot for the, for the engineering and the tooling that's gone into that. No. So... Very impressed. And also, while we're talking of, we have had a, an Arm Hobbies um, restock for the mm -hmm. other versions of the Hurricane and also the Wildcats as well. Yeah. And we've also got, which is the newer version, uh, which is the Fleet Air Arm one. Yeah. That's just coming as well. And that's just, we've just talked to Phil before we came on. I've had a sneaky peek in it. He's got one, the other version, you've got the US version coming. To review which is the expert one this is just the standard mm -hmm. uh standard version without the mass set and stuff but again the molding on this is just off the chart beautiful work yeah it is so nice yeah it looks like it's going to be an absolute pleasure to build so mm -hmm. again if you wildcats are your thing That's grab the way one. To do it. back to all my hobbies because i don't know if we mentioned this last week or not but they are releasing a 48 hurricane mm. it would so be nice to see the 48 stuff yeah so they're doing a mark 2c which everyone wants. Which everyone wants. <laughs> it's only sort of, as a gal has done one in the past, I think, if my research is right. Yeah. So if if it's an upscale version of the 72nd ones, then, well, you might as well bin everybody else's yeah, off. That's definitely. just going to set the benchmark by an absolute... Country you know, mile, yeah. It is, yeah. So, um, yeah, all mob is. Manufacturer of the year already. Yeah, that's it. I haven't even built it yet, but... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I have to say, obviously, we do our little thing at the end of each year. This year is actually going to be quite difficult, I think, because I say you've got things like that. Um, obviously, Mac 2 now are clearly in the running. Well, uh, obviously. <laughs> obviously, after finishing their state of the art mold. Uh, but also, <laughs> yeah. to be honest, it, I think it's going to be Eddard's going to be in the running, definitely. Yeah. Purely because, as I say, they've released some really nice stuff this year. Um, and, you know, all things considered as well, I think with the, the COVID crisis we've had this year, some of the companies clearly are still working really, really hard, where other yeah. ones have, let's just say, stuck their head in the sand a little bit and just kept out of the way. Other yeah. ones are really trying hard to keep everything going. And again, I think certainly from a, as it, horrible as it sounds, but from a business point of view, it's been fantastic, COVID, because a lot of people are coming back to the hobby. A lot of people who have got, you know, a bit of a stash have decided, you know what, I'm furloughed, got nothing else to do, uh, I'm gonna build. So it's been absolutely really nice to have new modelers coming back into it, you know, mm. and obviously, you know, we've got brand new youngsters coming into it as well. So it's a great thing to do when you're locked up, literally, yeah, so. Yeah, when you're stuck indoors, yeah, well, obviously that, how many weeks do we do? 14 weeks, 14 was it? Weeks, 12, yeah. 12, 14 when we're doing the live shows and stuff. Yeah. And obviously we got the feedback from doing that from the YouTube and and, and the forum and stuff. Mm. And people take apart and people go, oh, you know, I've just bought a model kit, I'm new to it. Yeah. You know, like I say, if, we, we've said before, if you take percentages, the people will stick with it. Mm. Hopefully, you know. Hopefully it will. You know, as you say, it might be a nice little resurgence back into the hobby. And, you know, yeah. obviously with this type of thing coming along as well, I know there's a lot of people think, oh, well, I'm new to it. You know, I wouldn't want to, you know, sort of go for something like that until my skills get better. I always say just go for it. You know, at the end of the day, yeah. trust me, you know, you enjoy the build. It's all the part of the hobby is enjoying it. You know, you're yeah. not there to stress yourself out or get upset with it or anything else like that. It, it's supposed to be relaxing. So build what you want to build. If you want to have a go at something like that, then definitely do it. You know, there's yeah. loads of stuff, not just on our forum, but right the way around the web as well to help you out with basic techniques and stuff like that. So, but everybody should build a model. Definitely. They should. Yeah. They should. So, also new in this week is uh, the ICM Stearman. Yes. In our arrival section. Um, I'll, I'll go. Again, I'll bring it up. <laughs> oh, okay. Hold Seamless. on. In the new arrivals area. 
Seamless. Seamless. There we go. So yeah. There it is. We've had we've had our delivery of those. I know it's been out a couple of weeks now, but we've had, we've got ours in. So another iconic airplane, isn't oh, it? Beautiful. I you know again, it's like ICM as well. It's funny how they're doing their releases because obviously. They seem to be not pigeonholed into a different manufacturing type thing. Because obviously they mm -hmm. did a lot of MiG-25s, yeah. um, reboxed obviously by Ravel and stuff like that. And then they did a lot of Luftwaffe, weren't they? So we had yeah. like, you know, JU-88s, HU-111s and all of those things. And the next thing you know, they're off doing Gladiators in 30 yeah. Second and Stearmans. Um, yeah. So it's quite nice. They've got different sort of, you know, feathers in their caps for doing different things. So yeah. Again, I think they do the market research, if I'm honest. Mm. I think they've got a good research team, and I think that's obviously from model companies' point of view is, is what you need. It's like what people would like. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, that that is an ideal kit for 30 seconds. It's not a massive aeroplane no. in real life. No. And it's one of them with the biplanes that they just transfer better to 30 seconds than obviously some of the other yeah. some of the other aircraft, you know, like the, the Gladiator you built. Mm fantastic in 30 second again if it gets a bit fiddly when you go down to 48th and 70 second absolutely yeah um yeah. and i think that'll be the same and i know they do the booker which is the luftwaffe trainer as well which mm -hmm. are the same era um so yeah it's interesting to see what they'll do next i uh, i must admit I, as i say they were our manufacturer uh, a couple of years ago wasn't it for icm purely because of how suddenly they went from being it's icm mediocre take your chances yeah. to beautiful very very nicely done we know they had a bit of change in uh, uh people working for them that come from other companies and that but it really paid off but fantastic as i say i call them the fit foot long brigade okay so if it's okay. under 30 centimeters it's a perfect yep. scale you know and as i say 30 second for biplane they're all the foot long scale so as you say you're into that thing 48 scale for jets because yep. it, it is that and you know i yep. know i do the huge stuff as well but i think it's still the the gentleman's scale if you like it, it it's the nice scale to work with it's traditional you don't need to have a massive work area you could do mm. it on the kitchen table without yeah. you know doing you know shifting it out of the way isn't a mass problem and stuff like that so yeah definitely and i can actually see myself building one of them yeah what to go with and the, actually doing it in those markings as well that traditional blue and yellow you know yeah. the sort of navy markings like that and yeah it, it, it is such an iconic aircraft and it's funny because i think i said at the time done the gladiator when are they going to do the steerman and then yeah. i think you said they're doing it so it's like yeah, well, well there you go because <laughs> it's uh well, again it's like it's they're like buses because obviously the rodan one came out as well because yeah. they've got a 30 second one um i've I mean, we've had the Rodan one in, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure on the price of that. It must be we've got it in store somewhere. But it's nice to see how they compare. Mm. Yeah, I would have yeah. That one would be a bit more refined, if I'm honest. Yeah, yeah. But, um, you've got options. That's the thing. You're not stuck, are you? If you want, no. you know, you pay your money, you take your choice. If you want a Rodan one, or now you want an ICM one. Yeah, I think definitely. It, was it Ravel's done a Stearman as well at some point? But that's 48, is it? Yeah, I think that was the 48 scale. I don't think they've done it in 30 second, have they? So. No, no, I think that might be the only one. So, mm. so anyway, yeah, we've got that in. And also, which we've just done about, we'll, we'll, I'll do this one because it's next to me. Yeah. Now, Italia, yeah, I've got a bit of a love or hate relationship with these, <laughs> along with Ravel. Yeah. Um, but this isn't their kit. So before it gets dismissed, or oh, it's an old Esky kit, or it's somebody else's, actually, this is the Platts kit, as ah. I was nicely informed by... Uh, by somebody so this is actually a really really nice kit and the one plus point you get with an italeri kit you get really nice marking options yeah decal, decal schemes mm. so you've got best of both worlds really yeah so you've got a nice little kit and uh, and some cracking decals to go with it so and as you can see with the luftwaffe one look yeah so nate there's one for you nate but yeah <laughs> it's be a really nice kit i've not se i've actually not seen one of these um reviewed but mm. the cool thing is the plats kit's really nice so it's funny how Italeri's gone for reboxing stuff out of Japan because yeah. obviously Fujimi and Platz is out of Japan yeah that's it yeah so mm. yeah whatever deal they've struck up out there I don't know but it's good for us anyway because it makes it easier and more accessible for us to get them yes definitely yeah so, so yeah if anybody's interested in obviously an early jet mm-hmm there we go. 
In Very 70 nice. seconds again, you see, 70 seconds, definitely the scale of the it year. It is the scale, that's it. The scale of 2020, 70 seconds. I can vouch for that, having built <laughs> VC10 yeah. in it. And then something else that's come in, which is 70 seconds by absolute long way. Yeah. It's going to cover me up as well, is that. Yes. Is the, uh, Tam well, it's, Eb it's Eb Tamia's kit, but it's fingered by Ebro, I think, released by Ebro, which is the, the yeah. matter, is it? MS11. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, this is an older kit, and it's not cheap either. 1968 cheap, 170 um, quid, yeah. Super detailed fuel injection engine, semi-pneumatic rubber-like tyres. There you go. Steerable mm. front wheels, a driver, and you get some photo etch. Very nice. So, but again, these have been like entity to get hold of. They go for silly money on eBay. Yeah. Uh, especially the bigger 112 scale Tamiya stuff. So mm -hmm. there in anyway, if anybody's interested in those. Very nice. So, yeah. And I think that's it for new arrivals. Hmm. So, I say a bit quieter. We're yeah. just waiting for, for some other stuff to come in. Mm-hmm. Um, doing soon... Let me just get rid of that. Sorry, I've just got something to flick up on my screen. Um, which I'm going to chase up is the P38s because from Tamiya, know the limited edition ones. Yeah. They are due in soon. I was going to ask today when I spoke to spoke to my man, and I completely forgot. I got sidetracked and was talking about other stuff, so I forgot. But I'll chase that up because I've already said they they're doing. I mean, I know they've got a container coming in today. Yeah. So you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. Um, but also going back to Edard, we've had a restock of Edard full job lot you know or what we can get in yeah um so all the different stuff they do sort of the 190s 109s spitfires well yeah everything and anything really um and also on restocks and i'd grab one of these because they're out of stock again at our supplier god bill give them the spiel because it's your favorite airplane <laughs> ever <laughs> that's my love hate aircraft isn't it okay yeah. so as you know, we waited for best part of five years for that aircraft to come along, and then literally it was out for all of a week. Ten minutes. <laughs> and then we completely sold out, uh, and they went out, out of stock. Um, and then we just never saw any more, which was really, really odd, because uh, we was expecting to obviously see them coming back in and moving through, and then they were releasing some of their older stuff from AMK. And, uh, yeah, we just never saw that kit back. It is what I would say the go-to all-rounder like we said before it's that thing where you've got a couple of options obviously you've got tamia you know um you've got uh hobby boss if you wanted to yeah. you've got hasegawa or you've got yeah. amk and they are all at the different levels of it forget your revels and all the rest of it because they're just horrible okay <laughs> so i always say that the nice thing with that one is is that for the price point which how much are they traditionally they are 57 quid 57 quid yeah. so when you put that to the tamiya one which is 90 odd yeah it? 90 quid so yeah, it's 90 it's quid 90 to 95 now i think absolutely so honestly i don't think it's quite as nice as in detail wise and easiest to go together as the tamiya one but that one obviously we get the old favorite of mine you can have the wings swept the flaps deployed you can have the gear you know all dressed down and everything else like it you get a full boatload of weapons and all the bits and pieces that go with it so if i was to build a tomcat tomorrow that's the one i would do it's unfortunate because i couldn't be bothered to wait for doing that one to get released for another year so i actually went out and built the tamiya one which is a beautiful kit goes together but for the money being an extra 20 quid or 20 odd quid i think really realistically i would go with the amk one if i'm building one tomorrow that's what i do my only downside is to it and now yeah. i've reviewed it is the wing sweep is fixed and i know one of our members did a thing where you could make it work that's a lot of hassle so again they've got it where it can be fully retracted 45 type of degrees or swept forward in in a way there's no way of actually maneuvering them around and everything else like that but again that's a little bit of a shame but so really you know if, if i was to say go for it or you've got the hasagawa one it's very old long in the tooth now and all the rest of it it's nothing on the power of those ones uh very very nice job but generally i think it's one of those kits it's it's nice it's got everything you want it's got great weapons that come with it all the bits and pieces just like that so yes is the weapon sets back in as well might be <laughs> only because he knows <laughs> he owes be. me a weapon set 
But also, <laughs> to go along with that one, and it is just down in here, um, the weapon set as well, talking about it, only because I reviewed <laughs> them at the same time. Uh, the weapon set, if you yeah. want really good, high quality, aftermarket, modern weapons, that's where you want to go. Because you've got your GBU 38s, the, the standard things that aircraft carry in this day and age uh, are in there. So it's really nicely done. But the great thing with those, they're all slip molded. So there's none of this putting yeah. fins on business or halves together. They come one and done. Just remove them from the sprue, quick clean up, and away you go. So very nice. Be interested yeah. to see if we get an A model out of that. They do the F-14A. I don't know. It took that long. To I was going to say, we waited so... five years for the D. Hey, let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Eh? <laughs> 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 but to be fair, hey, it's nice to see them back because obviously they've had a... Um, a full restock as well at our suppliers of AMK. Yes. So uh, I think we're doing to get some of the MiG 31s back in as well at some point. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, they are nice kits. I mean, that Dolphin there, which I know we're out of stock of, I can't I can't praise it high enough. And I know, like, Andy and, yeah. um, and whoever's built it have all gone. It's just fantastic it is such a nice kit to get together because we've still got the limited edition one because if you want them actually um edard have got them yeah we get all the good and good decals for yeah. it um so i'd grab the edard boxing of it to be honest if i was going to get one but it's it's a cracking kit is that still in new arrivals i can show them because we had it the come edard? in yeah no, it's in the Eddard itself. It's just in the Eddard really section because it. it came in a couple of weeks yeah, ago, didn't Eddard it? Yeah, the section is in there. So if you do want that one, this is the one. It's got a very nice yeah. yellow scheme wherever it is. Yeah. And the bottom, I think. There you go. Somewhere, where is it? There. So the silver one, look next to the jab Yabo. Oh, that one. There it is. Yeah. Didn't we have a yellow That's scheme one? Whose was no, that? No, I've only done that one. Oh, no, right. it's only that one. Oh, there we go. So anyway, that's the one. It's the profi one. So obviously you get the, the nice bits and pieces in with that. And your yeah. nice schemes. Yeah. Mass set, X set, usual, usual stuff. And I mean, for a limited edition, that's weird because that one's been around quite a while. Because mm. normally they come and go. Yeah. Oh, talking of limited editions, Lysanders. That was the other thing. I, I hadn't wrote it down on my little pad. Oh. Eddard Lysanders are back in stock. No, this, they're back in, not in New Arrival. Oh, no, no, sorry, this Ed Ard. All right. They were down there. Hold on, where was. we go back to Ed Ard. <laughs> yeah. A bit of editing will sort this. <laughs> they go down the bottom, they're right down the bottom. Oh, hello. I think that's a oh. Hercules. <laughs> oh, I thought he was having a storm. No, no, there's a Herc coming in low. Ah, oh, right. There um, we go, that's it. That's the uh, Western Lysander Mark III, limited edition yep. one. Yep. Again, so, really, really nice kit, that one. Worth grabbing again. It's one of them that's worth uh, grabbing. I know they come out sporadically because I think, obviously, Ed Ard the moles for for that kit. Um, but again, it's a limited edition one. So I don't think the box art's as exciting. No, as it's it not really, be, is it? If I'm honest with them. No. Yeah, I could do with a bit of a background on that. <laughs> yeah the lysander yeah. looks nice but yeah it yes. is a bit more uh played down that one yeah but well, anybody who's in interested in the lysander especially 48th one then obviously that is definitely they want to go for which is an ex gavia kit but it's, there's no no comparison with anybody else i don't think so get one because we saw bucket those when it was out before so yeah it is again it's a nice iconic common. aircraft though isn't it that's the thing a bit bigger than 30 second though wasn't it mind you um was it Matchbox, did it? Yes, they did. <laughs> yes. But it's got a wingspan. The wingspan would be huge. It's a lot bigger aircraft. Because I've seen one at, the one at Hendon. Yeah. In the museum. And yeah. it's a lot bigger aircraft than you actually think it is. Hmm. It is a big old so, lump. Yeah. It is a big old lump. So, let's say that that's restock stuff. Also coming in, um, probably going to be next week is an ak restock which is now going to include starship filth and smoke very nice at, at last and a few other bits the mask sets are going to be back in as well all their masking templates that we um that we we add in so yeah. so yes, yes i mean the, so all the oils are pretty stocked up to I be was honest going to say we're pretty good on all it was just those yeah. two ones which are very very popular yeah. Um, yeah so yes good old starship filth and smoke yeah so that'll do it also doing at the end of the week now this is something that phil's obviously going to love this is a uh, pig models 
one to one scale 88 shells for all, both versions which is going to be for the tiger one and the tiger two that's it so he's good He's going to find these pictures and edit them in for me. I will. Yes. <laughs> yeah. See below. Yes. So, a bit different. As I say, if you go to the tank museum, they do inflatable versions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, these they, are the real, I can say the real deal, but obviously not. But you yeah. know what I mean? They are, they are full one-to-one -one scale tiger shells. And apparently they're doing um, T-34 shells as well. All right. One-to-one scale. -one, I can't think which one it is i was told yesterday and it's forgot you know me. again this is one of those uh, things you think at the time why? why 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 would you want that yeah yeah but i can honestly say i hey. happen to have we know we spoke about this one thanks to my yeah. uh, granddad during the war yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it would be nice to have the other half of it you know it would. yeah <laughs> But uh, yeah, that's it. So when we did the research on this from the bottom and everything, we came out, this is a 1942, whatever it was. And, uh, but yeah, it, it, it actually, it's quite funny. Not only do they make good door stops, uh, but uh, it'd be one of those, if it had the head on it as well, it would be quite a smart object to have. Or you can like bung them on the wall and all the bits and pieces, you know? So, well, I think it's interesting right, stuff. They don't take up much space because no. they're right. Yeah, I was going to say, you just stand them on your shelf upright or on the table out the way as a backdrop. You know, I must admit, I've got a couple of um, Saturns and things like that, uh, you know, rockets and stuff. They don't take up any space because you can either lie them down or just stand them up somewhere. So, and it is, yeah. it's one of those things, it's a complete talking point. It's very interesting. Even if you've got people around your home or something and they're not into modelling, you can guarantee they'll say, what's that? <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah why you got a tank shell in why the is there a tank room? shell in <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i would have thought to be honest i'm just looking at your saturn 5 you built opposite mm. and i bet it's about not far off can't be far off that the no the length of that so you're going to get a bit of a, a yes. bit of a unit with it so mm. they yeah they're doing the end of the week i think the retail is going to be about 60 quid on yeah. both thoughts so oh, something interesting something a bit different like you say so yeah yeah definitely so Right, also, I've put some special offers up. Hold on. I'm going to try and keep up with the special offers page. It got a bit lapsed. I mean, there's still some things that, you know, are still on special offer. But if you go scroll up a bit. I'll yeah, no, some... I am. That's the yeah, top. I can't, I can't see on my screen then. All right, yeah. But obviously, there's a chin up there and the cockpit. And I don't know, you have to shout it out. Cause, ah, there we go. Oh, there we go, yeah. There we go, the A10. Um the Dragon Firefly, which I've built actually, and is not a bad kit. And the Lysander, which again is a fantastic yeah, kit. Yeah, lovely that? little kit. I've reviewed another, that, yeah. Another company that's uh, up and coming. I'll tell you what, really nice for the A10, like I was saying, Hobby Boss could do that, is upgrade it to be in the uh, A10C and take yes. the old Pave Penny bits off and put the updated cockpit into it and stuff like that because it's going to be around for yeah. quite a while so it'd be nice of them to do that but that actually as i say i've got it it's above me uh isn't a bad kit at all that's actually quite a nice kit yeah. i do like that one and yeah. that rifield sherman yeah yeah it yeah doing actually rifield delivery is coming in with gary at tiger robbies um pretty soon i think it's september yeah so we'll have a full restock of of, uh, of rifield very nice. Um, and then obviously we've got the hind, half a hind. Half a hind, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there is lots of aftermarket available for it now. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. I think that's what I was waiting for, will not it? Mm. Get the aftermarket guys on it and upgrade it, especially if you can get that. Because uh, somebody is actually distributing the cockpit look. Andy bought, aren't they? Yes, yeah, that the resin cockpit raised cockpit, on. yeah. Yeah, and they are nice. Yeah. And the m -rack, what a kit that is. Uh, that is a beautiful, beautiful kit. I still have to say, I'm going to build that at some point. Uh, it's yeah. legendary. Not only is it a really nice looking vehicle, but that yeah. kit is absolutely stunning. And again, if you want to go down the aftermarket route, you can get all the racks for the radio equipment and everything for the yeah, back in photo etch and, and resin and stuff. As well. yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. Like I said, we'll try, I'll try and keep on top of that. Either me or Andy will get my get, you know, talk to Andy and we'll just we'll just start that back up again now so mm -hmm. you see what's on specials and stuff like that so so that's that section uh moving on next we're going to go on to the pre-order bit because we've got some new pre-orders that andy's put up and he's going to put up yes. so um we've got the hk lancaster front end is up on pre-order yeah and i've got a feeling this one might be popular yes oh sorry um, 
It's all right. You click away. No, go on. Carry on. Um, and also, going back to Eddard again, now we've not got a price on this, but it's up for pre-order, and I've got a feeling it's probably going to be around-ish, the same price as the Spitfire. Mm -hmm. um, to coincide with the Battle of Britain, they're bringing out a dual combo 109E. Nice, yeah. Which again comes with a seated pilot figure, obviously your two kits and your bits of resin and mass sets and everything else. And I've got a feeling that's going to have great box art as well. Mm -hmm. So it's the yin to your yang or the other yeah. way around. So if you've got the Spitfire, you're going to need a 109 to go with it because then you've got your collection, haven't you? Yeah. So that's 48 to dual combo. And also they're bringing out the 32nd version of a 109 in the Battle of Britain as well. Yeah which I think comes with a figure, a standing figure in 30 seconds and the other bits, that's only one kit. Again, we're going to put that on pre-order. We're just waiting for a price on it. So, again, as soon as we get some sort of, you know, guidance of how much it's going to be, Andy will put it up there. Also, and this is winging its way to you because I've sent it yesterday with along with this uh, Hurricane and a, a Wildcat, is the Tacken Chieftain, the dual kit one yeah. that we've got on the site. They're bringing out a Chieftain and a 432 in 70 second. Which is funny because up at the unit, I've got my Chieftain with a 432, both in the Berlin scheme yeah. in 35th. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now, you, now you'll be able to do them in 30 second. Yeah. So that's up on pre-order as well. So I think it's been a slow seller, that um, that Chieftain, but I think once you've done a review, I think people will realise actually how well, nice it is once you can are. get your overhead on it and show the detail because... Bear in mind, again, it's two kits in one box. It's not just one kit. Yeah. And, again, as, as far as I know, it's the only 72nd Chieftain. So, mm. yeah. you know, it'll be a nice combo with 432. And also we're going to put up as well, which I think if he hasn't done it, he's going to do it today, is the new Revell E-Type Jag, which is a new tooled one. I think it's their only new tooled kit this year. Right. Fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. Come on. You can do it, Ravel. It'll be nice. It'll be a nice kit. No, be, it should be all right. Their car kits actually are really nice. For however much I know Ravel and everything, the car kits are pretty good. It's one yeah. thing they're, they're quite good at. <laughs> <laughs> and it's an E-Type Jag, another iconic car in it by a long way. And God, I think it's the old Hella one or yeah. Airfix. Is, there's not a lot available, which is, again, it's a bit criminal, really, for mm. for what it is, isn't it? It's such an iconic so, vehicle. You get more two CVs than you do Jags. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. It's just mad, isn't it? Really, I don't know if it's a license thing because obviously Jaguar is still a company, or yeah. I don't know. I don't know how it works for cars and stuff. But yeah, mm. again, um, I've been informed as well that doing soon is the um, the Fokker triplane from yes. Meng or X wing nut wings, whichever way you want to call it. Yeah. That's doing soon because we've got that on pre order as well. Yeah, so. That'll be nice to see. Mm -hmm. Also, Kitty Hawk are back from the dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By the looks of it, because um, one of our suppliers, shall we say, have had a restock. So right. hopefully that's going to follow through for everybody else to get in it. Cool. But there's no sign of the SU-25. No. No, the 27UB, the 27 SU30, is it? K, K, mm -hmm. whatever. I don't know, I'm not up on the SUs, but yeah. they seem to be out. But yeah, the SU25, which... Is the uh, B BN in? Yeah, both the, yeah, both the Mirages are in, in 30 seconds. So the single seat and the two seat. Yeah. So yeah, they're, they're available. Cool. Price there, but, you know, it's a Mirage 2000. It's a lovely looking aircraft, isn't it? It is. So yeah, they're available. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no no sign or nothing in information of this SU-25, so I don't know what's happened to that. Hmm. We'll see, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, just going on to tools while I've got my notes here. We're out of scrapers, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> and we're out of the nippers, the single-sided nippers, and our supply where I've been getting from are out of stock as well. So until they get a restock, Mm -hmm. We won't be seeing any again because I know people's asked them when we're restocking them and I've missed out and stuff, which just brings me back to our um, waitlist system on the site and how it works. OK, because I've had some messages Well, I was on the waitlist system and then I've come to buy it and it's sold out. Mm -hmm. What the waitlist system is, is when I put them back in stock, me or Andy, mm -hmm. 
we get notified to say, right, there's a wait list of however many people are. The thing is, it's still a first come, first serve basis. Yeah. It's not like you're going to get priority. It just means they're back in stock. So if you get a notification or an email saying it's back in stock, especially on the tools things with scrapers and more the more common things is to grab it straight away. Don't yeah. wait. There's no priority system. It's just an indication that it is back in. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's how the system works. We can't override that. There's nothing we can do on our end to say, you know, if you're on a wait list that you're going to get priority over it because it, it's not how it works, I'm yeah. afraid. Yeah. Which, in a way, perhaps it should. Because mm-hmm. you know, if somebody's been waiting ages and then for whatever reason they've missed it again, I yeah. can see them being annoyed because I would be. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I, I, it's not, we don't design these systems, we just use them. If that it makes is, sense. and unfortunately, because so we do a... have thousands of lines on the store, yeah. it, it's not like that, you know, it, it goes in the system, if you like, it's very difficult. Well, if you only add, like, you know, a few hundred things, you might be able to do it, but when you're talking thousands of different things we've got in stock now, for us to keep an eye on every one and make sure people who have ordered have done it, it, it's not a viable, really, time for us to do that, unfortunately. Yeah. So, yeah, do yeah. grab them. I had the same thing with washes and sanders when we were out of stock recently, and people saying, I've come to get them, it's gone back out, because we only had our brief resupply, shall we say. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And I had the same thing, and it is, like I used to say, just click on that link. When the email comes through, click on the email link, it'll take you straight to it. You can click and buy it, and you're done. And that's it. Yeah. You know, it's, a, it's the quickest and easiest way. Um, but yeah. just on that note, uh, obviously, I got my full allocation now of everything. Literally, tens of thousands of sanders turned up again on on Sunday, weirdly. And then the other half turned up on Monday. So we've got tons of absolute everything. PM models will get a restock of all the starter sets uh, and everything completely, probably Friday. I'll get it on a courier for them tomorrow uh, and they'll get it on Friday, probably get it online next week as well. So that's not a problem for that one. And we've got now full stocks of absolutely everything. We've had our full allocations at last, so we are good. Even if you still do get your COVID special bottles of wash <laughs> with the uh, metal lids. Because unfortunately, well, I can't get the plastic lids. So you're getting the new COVID edition. <laughs> so, but yes. It's still, it's still the same product. Inside, it's still the it? same thing. It's just getting this very nice little dinky aluminium. It's better for the planet, yeah. less plastic. There you go. That's how I'm selling it, even though they cost twice as much as the plastic ones. So they won't be around for long. They are limited edition, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very limited, yeah. So um, just while I remember as well before, um, we've got the two new Tamiya paints in stock, which is the XF92 and XF93, mm-hmm. which are the DAC colours. Yeah. So if you're into your Africa core paints and, you know, whatever armour, mm-hmm. then... Tamiya, are re- they're doing it in the LP range as well. We ain't got that yet, but the XF range is in. Right. So that got delivered yesterday. And going on to paints, again, it's very fluid on our restocks. It comes in when it comes in. I know we had XF69 come in yesterday, 58. I put an order in today, so there's going to be some more come in for Friday. Um, and I think some more of the back orders that I've got are going to come in as well because they've come in on a container. So, again, it's just... Yeah again very fluid how the paint is so grab them i think is grab the thing when you can. See in. yeah i think it is to be honest so that leads us on to the last bit of the show which is future releases and what's going to be released or coming in soon hopefully mm-hmm. um definitely what is being released is hobby 2000 now for those who don't know that's a company who are releasing um Hazagawa and Fujimi kits in 72nd, they have been. So they've done the Skyhawk and the Bow Fighter, and we've yeah. got them in stock anyway. And they're just some nice things because you get a mass set and some of it you get a little bit of resin. Mm-hmm. Well, they're releasing some F4s. They're doing um, Vietnam versions of the C and the D, which are ex Hazagawa kits in 72nd, which apparently are very nice. They don't release rubbish. No, no. Anybody, you know, oh, it's going to be raised panel lines. They don't do that. Um, so. We've got some of them. We'll probably put them up on pre-order, to be honest, to see who's interested. But again, if you're into your F4s, that's it. Um, probably a good one to have. I presume the only other one was the Fujimi F4 Cs and Ds, was it, when they did theirs? I would have thought so, yeah. yeah. Can't, can't think of any others unless mm-hmm. somebody you know, lets us know. And also, they are releasing their first 35th scale kit, which is a, a Takum kit, which is a ZSU-57-2, which basically is a anti-aircraft. Self-propelled artillery, on, uh, yeah. T-54 chassis. Yeah. 
I think it's what was before the Shilka. Yeah. So that kit's not been available for ages. I've actually got in my stash the original Takum kit. Mm -hmm. So kind of makes sense why that's not been released, re-released from Takum. Um, I think the retail's about 45 quid. So proper proper nice cat you could do a lot with it a lot used in the middle east yeah that's right yeah so, definitely you know, i think egypt's adam iran iraq uh, you know usual suspects yeah. that you can batter them up mm -hmm. and last but not least kinetic harrier yeah what three so which we're know. waiting for this one nice to have that one in i was going to be a little gem that kit be very very yes. nice yeah uh, box art was put up by i think jamie put it up to be honest yeah i got it up on facebook the other day so Again, that that means that's going to do it. I've got a feeling that might be September-ish. Yeah. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, September, October at the latest, probably. So again, that's going to be one because is the one. It is, yeah. No, the you know, let's face it, the, the old the Airfix is, one. You're free, isn't it? You wouldn't Would touch you? it with the barge pole. So. <laughs> so it'd be interesting. Yes. The Harry is actually quite nice, aren't they? I know you've built the Sea Harry earlier. Yeah, the, all the other Harrys yeah. have been absolutely beautiful. So I've got no reason to think that, that one won't be. Very so, nice. Something you'd be interested in doing? Absolutely, yeah. Definitely do a GR3. Yeah, with a long nose. Definitely. Oh, you're a GR. Oh, right. I thought, I thought you might do the GR1. No, no. The three, GR3 with a long nose. That's the one. All oh, right. That's the okay. nice one. <laughs> yeah. oh, cool. Cool. So, I wonder if they'll follow on and do the fives and sevens and it stuff. It would be nice if they did the five sevens and the, yeah. go Is down it? the US route and do the AV8Bs. Yeah. I was about to say that because obviously with the GR1 and stuff, you can go down the AV8 route, can't yeah. you? Yeah, definitely. Uh, which would be silly if they didn't. No, I really. should think they would do. It'd be nice to complete the way through because they'd corner the market. I know, obviously, Hasegawa got their ones in that one. They did the five, the seven, the almost nine, yeah, uh, and really. then the AV8Bs. But there's a few other versions, the US ones, that they didn't. So, yeah, yeah. different. So, hmm. uh, so, yeah, so hopefully that will be doing soon. And, again, as soon as we get a price, that's going up on pre-order on our site as well. So, yeah. Uh, or up on the forum, should I say? Mm -hmm. um, and the last thing as well, just just for a skip it, um, ICM, our favourite, are yeah. bringing out the, the fire truck. Yes. Do it to you, your <laughs> you know, all the Chernobyl stuff that's coming out, because I know what, the figures are coming out. What were they? The rubble clearers or whatever. That's it on the roof. Yeah. On the roof, yeah. but the fire truck's coming out, and that again is going to be one of them. You can weather that to. Oh, you yeah, can do what you like with it. That, definitely. You know, be what it is. It'll yeah. be fantastic a fab hmm. basis to to work on and if it anything like their other trucks that they've done it's fully detailed and you know for the money they're just they're just oh, brilliant they fantastic good quality kits oh uh, price break that, yeah so that's it that's that very good uh, just on the pre-orders just to say yeah. though isn't it that once the pre-orders are finished that's it yes they are finished they are finished so when they're retired off of the yeah. forum where you've put your pre-order in and all the rest of it there is no going back okay so you know that is literally it so you can't yeah. come along afterwards it's only if then they you know available any that we got left make themselves out to general sale yeah but they'll be yeah. at full price you know the idea with the pre-order is it's done at a discount price we know how many you need we can then get them in and then usually we have a few over anyway uh, yeah, for, for general sure. stock of the store and stuff but they'll yeah. be at obviously a higher price than it is we can't yeah. then turn around after and say oh we'll do it at the pre-order price because that's yeah, how that not, works it's not fair is it it's not fair on the no, people that's who it. the people who pre-ordered it and done it don't forget we don't take any monies until your kit is ready to be dispatched so yeah absolutely so cool bro i think that's it mate so i think you could go for a cool down now and that's ice it i'm all right i've got you. my fan i should just oh. buy fans <laughs> <laughs> i couldn't do it without this i'd be actually yeah, dying i was dying in here yesterday so, trying to we were just literally finishing off the final touches of the vc10 and i came out of it absolutely yeah. dripping stick to these chairs they seem great and they're nice and comfy but you know i'll stick to them on a hot day you know yeah so yeah, yeah. Um, yes definitely I, I know um it's me and john on tomorrow night with you isn't it it is hopefully it'll oh, be a bit God. cooler they are saying here the temperature's supposed to drop 10 degrees tomorrow so, because no, at the moment it's it. actually showing around about 33 outside our back here. We've got a little covered area. So although it's not in the sun, it traps yeah. the heat, but it's got to be at least 30 normally outside at the moment. So yeah, definitely yeah. not one to be running around. Yeah. Hopefully by the time we'll be on at 7.30 tomorrow night, it'll be a bit cooler. So I've got the fan in the shed. <laughs> yeah, that's me. it. I might bring the big fan in as well. So, yeah. but yes. So, 
hopefully yeah it will be a bit uh, a bit cooler because literally come what four o'clock three o'clock the sun is directly on the door of my shed so it don't off yeah kick cook. The heat out, you know what i mean i'm being cooped up because i'll obviously be here mm. i can't open the door up nobody's at home to hear it so yeah. as soon as i get back fan will be on door will be open and we'll get some air circulating so so yes be fun so be fun. yeah I'll see you tomorrow then. Yeah, tomorrow definitely. Then. Okay then, guys. Well, we'll call it right there. Thank you very much yep. for joining me and Matt this afternoon. Remember, you get all your usual gear at pmmodelsuk.com. Uh, full details down below, and the links for these will be down below, and you can catch those reviews as well if you want to have a look there, or any other reviews. Just click on the review section, and you can catch up with those there. So, till later, everybody. Happy modeling. Take care. Goodbye. Goodbye. Wait, bye, bye, Matt.